Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial. This is David Ward and in this tutorial we're going to go over setting up a a nice little hillside with a, a bunch of uh, creatures running over it. So it'll be like a massive horde like something from Braveheart or <laughs> Lord of the Rings with all the uh, the orcs or you know Star Wars with whatever. Anyways I'm gonna show you how to do that using the Boyd's system which is under the particles. So without further ado let's go ahead and start setting our scene up. First thing I want to do is delete the default cube. And I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and turn on the screencast keys. It's going to be under add-ons, screencast keys right there, 3D view. Go ahead and check that box. And I'll hit N to uh, bring up my properties panel. And you can see that's at the very bottom. Start display. And uh, should be good to go. So now you can see when I scroll my mouse wheel, the little icon of the mouse wheel lights up. If I hit an, a button on my keyboard, it'll show which button I'm pushing. So you'll be able to follow along a little easier that way. Okay. So um, another plugin I want to use is to create a landscape. And there's one called the ANT Landscape Generator. It's ANT Landscape. Go ahead and check that box. And I'm going to shift A and I'm going to add a mesh landscaping. See the little plugin, the. Uh, electric cord and plug on the end of there. That means it's a plug-in. So we'll just put that and uh, put it way over there. We'll we'll fix that as soon as we get it set up the way we want. But uh, the way we do that is over here on your toolbox, tool panel, uh, you can see a few different options. Uh, the first thing, subdivisions of 64, that's probably fine, but the mesh size, I want to make it quite a bit bigger. So I'm going to go with 20. And you can see that makes it substantially bigger. Uh, 10 times as big because it was too... Uh, two sizes before. So anyways, um, I would like the um, the bumps there to be a little less bumpy. I'd like it to be more uh, like a hillside than, than a, a, a rocky street or something. So um, I'm going to change the noise size to be quite a bit bigger. And it kind of disappeared, so I'm going to come down here and uh, set the plateau. That's, uh, if I, I'll tell you what, let's leave it at one. And if I go to height, of four, you can see it flattens off at the top. That's because the plateau is set to one. So anything above one kind of gets sheared off as a, a flat topped uh, plateau. So we'll change that to five just so we can get kind of a mountainous region. Now, um, this would be f awesome to see a bunch of little things running over the hillside there, but with all these little bumps and ridges, it's going to be very jittery looking because they follow the actual uh, surface of the of the uh, the bottom mesh here so if it's real bumpy then they're gonna be bumpy and it'll, it just won't look that great so let's set the noise size to be a little bigger let's try 15 like so and maybe we'll make it a little less high just a nice hillside maybe let's go 2.5 there we go and also I would like uh, the I don't want it to be just a hill in the middle of our land here I'd like it to be, you know, just a, 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 a square of land, not necessarily fading out with a mountain in the middle. So I'm going to turn, change the fall off to none. And you can see now we have just a, a shot of land. Okay, so that's going to look good. Eh, maybe maybe the noise size a little bigger. It looked a little bumpy there. Let's go ahead and go to 20. Maybe even, maybe even a little bigger. Let's try 30. And maybe set the height up just a little bit more. Okay, that'll probably work. You can play with it and kind of get it the way you want. But once you deselect it, those settings are set. So now, like I said, let's go ahead and Shift D. Actually, not Shift D. Let me undo that. Control Z. Um, Shift D to create a, du a duplicate, and I didn't want that, so I'm going to go Shift S. That's the one I wanted to push, and go Selection to Cursor. Actually, it's there already. So we'll go Shift S Selection to uh, I guess let's go cursor to center. It'll put the 3D cursor right there back in the middle of the scene. And now if I go Shift S, selection to cursor, it'll center it up properly. Okay, so now what I'm wanting to happen is I want to put the camera down here at the bottom so it's kind of looking up at the hill and then slowly kind of does a cinematic, you know, pan and truck where it kind of comes up and looks down, kind of like, like it is now. But uh, I want to be able to control a little better, so what I'm going to do is Shift-A, and I'm going to add an empty 
just the plain axes. And if I hit N in my 3D viewport here, it'll bring up the properties panel. So I want to rename that empty to be camera, camera target. There we go. And now, can't hardly, we can't see it above the ground because it's below the ground. So let's grab that empty there and let's set the, uh, if we go over here to the uh, object or the data, active data to display there. Let's set that to five. So that's quite a bit bigger. And we'll grab the camera, shift select that uh, empty and hit control T. And then we'll say track to constraint. So now anytime we move that target around, the camera will follow. So if we hit zero on our numpad, we're looking through the camera. And you can see if we move that target around, the camera follows. Okay, so tell you what, let's go ahead and get our camera set up the way we want. Let's go ahead and drag that way back here, about to right there. I'm gonna grab that target if I can grab it. Ugh. Go under here. There we go. Kind of move that. There we go. So if we look through our camera, might need to move it up just a tad, maybe zoom in just a bit. We don't want the edges of the land to come out because that would obviously ruin the illusion. So if I set the 3D the uh, camera target. Let's move that way back here. And we'll look through the camera. Okay, so set our target down there. Okay, so now if we turn on our automatic keyframe insertion, we have our target selected. Let's go ahead and shift select our camera so we have them both selected. Just kind of wiggle them around a little bit just so they automatically insert a keyframe there. And we'll go ahead and fast forward all the way to the end. We're going to use the de default 250 frames, which is uh, a little over 10 seconds. I guess it would be. Uh, actually a little over 11 seconds if we're going to use the default 24 frames per second. So um, now that we're at the very end, so I want a nice cinematic shot of the camera kind of panning up, trucking up. I'll grab that target, maybe kind of zoom out just a bit as well. So like so. So now if we rewind all the way and hit play, kind of see a nice slow view from kind of a ground view to a bird's eye view. That looks kind of boring now, but once we get our little thing set up here with the, the all the little creatures running across the ground there, it'll look pretty cool. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And I was playing with this earlier, so I'll just go ahead and re replace the test I was playing with. Go ahead and save that. Massive horde. Um, okay, so now we have our ground set up. I'd like to go ahead and set up uh, the particle system for the for the little runners. Um, we'll get the actual runners themselves set up later, but uh, for now we're just going to get the everything set up to move the way we want. So what I have to do is go ahead and let's go into top view, and I'm going to insert a new plane. Drag that way over here to our side view. Let's hit five, so we're in orthographic view rather than perspective. Let's drag that new plane just above the surface, and then we'll go to our top view and make sure it's on top of the, or above the uh, the actual landscape there. And we can't really see it here. We don't want to be able to see it because that's where all the, the new, or all the uh, the characters are going to be coming out of. So we don't want to see their origin, otherwise they'll just be like appearing out of nowhere. So what, one thing we can do to help with that is just go uh, grab the landscape, and we'll grab that far corner, and let's turn on the proportional editing, and just drag that down a little bit like so. So we actually have a bit of a valley on the other side of that, the apex of that hill that we can lower our emitter down so we won't see it. If I look through the camera, we won't see that at all. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and grab our uh, plane. Let's go ahead and rename it to um, character uh, emitter, I guess. Okay, and then we'll come over here, if we middle click my mouse button there and and drag it. I'm gonna go over here to the little starry looking things and that's the particles. Go and hit the plus button. And uh, particle system, eh, just go and leave it named that, I guess it doesn't really matter. So we're just gonna have one, so no really, no big reason to differentiate. Um, okay, so now we need to set up some emissions here, or the settings in the emission. We don't want a thousand of them, because that's, that's quite a bit for now. We'll just set 20, just to get an idea of what it's going to look like. And uh, also for now, we're going to set a start and end at frame 1. So everything is going to appear in the scene at the same time. 
Now, as we get this set up, we might want to tweak that a little bit so we don't have just one large mass moving at the same time. I'd like to have a whole, a lot of like a continuous in pour of the characters once we get it set up. So we'll do that later. But for now, like I said, everything's one, start at one and end at one. They're all going to be in the scene at the same time. And now we need to change the lifetime, otherwise they're going to disappear after frame 50. So we don't want that. We want at least frame 250. Because that's the, length, the entire length of our animation. So we want them to be in the scene the whole time. So now, uh, we have to change uh, some more settings. You can see they're just kind of falling out there. So, um, one thing I need to do is grab the uh, landscape itself and go over to our physics panel and tell it to be a collision. So now... You can see that those particles bounce off of that. Okay, so we need to tell it a little bit more. We need to set the stickiness on there to, let's make it two. So now, they're kind of falling through it still right now, but uh, that's because they're still just particles. They're not voids yet, which they need to be. I guess, I'm not sure why it's called voids. I'm sure it's an acronym, or it might be just <laughs> a fun way to say birds. The voids, I don't know. But anyways, we go to our particle settings and come down here under physics and change it to voids. So now, if we hit play, you can see they don't really do anything. They just kind of kind of come together and then just kind of start floating around a little bit. So we need to change a few settings here. Um, we go down to the, what's called the void brain. Void brain. Yeah, the void brain. Uh, and we need to tell it to do a couple more things. So what I want it to do, obviously, is come over this little ridge here and run down the hillside towards the camera. But it doesn't know it needs to do that, so I need to tell it to follow a leader. And I need to create the leader, so I'm going to go ahead and go Shift S, cursor to selected, so I get the 3D cursor right there where the emitter is, and I'm going to Shift A, and I'm going to add an empty. And I'm going to use a, a, a sphere this time because it's a little just a little bit easier to see. Go ahead and rewind all the way to zero. And we have our automatic keyframe insertion still turned on. So again, just kind of wiggle that a little bit so it gets a keyframe set in there. And we'll go ahead and zoom all the way to the end. And go to our top view and just drag that new empty all the way past the camera and maybe down a little bit. So now you can see it goes from point A to point B, which would work, but I kind of like to add a little bit of variation there so it's not just a straight line. So let's move it a little bit over this way, maybe up the hill there, and then maybe go to about 180, and then maybe kind of start coming more this way. So now we'll kind of a zigzag pattern. Okay, so now we have that set. Let's go ahead and rename that empty to We'll call it uh, Boyd Leader. There we go. So now we'll grab our particle emitter now. And over here, go ahead and hit the little plus sign. And we'll say, follow the leader. And we'll go ahead and set that to Boyd Leader. Now before we test it, there's a, there is a difference it makes in the order that these rules are on here. If we see rule evaluation, let's move that out. So. Um, the first one it uses is separate, and that means that they're all, they all enter the scene in one clump, basically. And if they separate out, then they'll kind of drift apart from each other, which is what we want. And then they flock together, can they kind of follow each other as a pack, and then they follow the leader. Now, um, one would think that uh, these two wouldn't necessarily make a difference, but I found that follow the leader needs to be the second one. So if we rewind all the way and we hit play, you can see that those guys kind of come out and then they start following the leader. And that works pretty nicely. So if we look through our camera, we can see they're kind of just bouncing around though. So we need to change a few other things here. Go back up to our physics settings and turn off allow flight. We don't want them flying. We basically just want them on the land. So we just say allow land. So let's rewind all the way and see what it looks like this time. You're gonna see that leader coming around and then all of those little spots following suit. 
That's pretty much working almost exactly how I want it to. Um, let's change the land speed a little bit. Let's make it a little slower. And just so we can see it better, let's collapse this physic panel and the void brain. And we'll come down here to the render settings. Well, we don't really need the render settings just yet. We'll say to the display settings and set the draw size. Make that a little bigger. Let's zoom forward so we can actually see some of them. Actually, I guess I'll have to play first because it is a physics. It, is, it does have to be calculated on the fly. So if you don't want to... I mean, so you want to be able to calculate it as it goes. So I'm going to get a better view there. If we draw it a little bigger even, draw size 10. Now we can see. Okay. So now we have a nice quiet. Then you hear tally-ho or something. And here they come running over the hillside. Now you see all 20 of them like right there. But like I said at the beginning, I would like to have you know, kind of give the illusion that this is a massive army. So I want more than just this small group of them showing. So let's zoom all, roll all the way back here. Actually grab our emitters first. You know what, let's just go ahead and name this army. And uh, right now, say we have 20. I want a lot more than 20. Let's say we have 101. That way we can say we have hundreds. <laughs> if it's more than 100, it's hundreds. So, um, you see, here, it takes them a while to get over that hill. There they go. Now you can see a, quite a bit more of them. And that looks pretty good. But uh, once we get about to here, if you wanted to make your animation even longer, that's, it'd just be one big group right there. But I want them to be continuing to come over that hillside. So I'm going to set the end point through the emission start at frame one, end at, let's try, let's say 150. So they're gonna just appear out of the emitter over here from frame one all the way to frame 150. So that means as they start cross, uh, crossing the top of the hill here, there's still gonna be new ones coming out back. So once you know the main group that would normally be down here, there's still some being produced that are gonna be later to the battle. So now if we hit play, get an idea and there they come. So it's not it's a big group at the beginning they're coming out and they're still coming over the top. So that's that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and save this.